I think in my abstract, I wrote that ocean is um, actually 71% of the Earth's surface. And that's something that everybody knows. But being like human, living in land, and um, kind of really have a hard time visualizing how much is that 71%. No, it's, uh, it's hard. We don't live there. And, and I really like this visualization because it's a circle and you can see that the, the teeny tiny portion that we live in is so like dwarfed by the immensity of the ocean. And, and we also don't really think about the life in the ocean. Yeah, we think about dolphins and whales, but there's so much more life in the ocean, not just on the surface, the ocean, the, the life that I study, but also throughout the whole water column of the ocean. So at NASA, we're really, really interested in this portion of the Earth's biosphere and ocean. And, um, that's what I'm going to be talking about today. I'm going to be talking about how do we observe the invisible ocean from space via the, this upcoming satellite called Plankton Aerosol Cloud Ocean Ecosystem. It's visible from the name that is really not just ocean ecosystem and, and stuff. It's also studying, the uh, satellite is going to be studying also atmosphere, but I'm going to be mostly talking about ocean because that's what's dear and near to my heart. So going back to my circle of, of biosphere, circle of life. If I was there with you and I asked you what color is the ocean, you would probably say blue. And to a certain extent, ocean is blue. Um, most of the ocean is blue. But ocean can also be many different colors. Um, here, I'm just showing you some of the colors of the ocean. You can see brown, you can see green, you can see this yellowish weird. You can see this like really light, well, light blue and this dark, the, the mur most purest blue that actually reminds me where I come from, from Croatia. Uh, but all these are colors of the ocean. Ocean can also be like all, almost milkish, and it can be also brown, blackish. It can be yellowish. It can be any different color. And that's because the way that the sun interacts with the with the water. Uh, if the if there's only water, it would be ocean would be purely blue, even purple. But there's so many things in the ocean that can modify the color and the way we perceive it by our eyes. So if you focus on this one in the center, um, this this greenish turquoise, this is probably ocean with some sand underneath. There's somebody like ran on a beach and kicked some sand and that changed the color of the ocean to be this like little azure or blue. Um, this color, you could say oh, it looks yucky, but it's actually, no, that's also color of the ocean. It doesn't have to be polluted. It doesn't have to be yucky. If you think about the tea, if you drink tea like I do, you put dead leaves into your water and those dead leaves ooze organic material and it changes the color of that water to brown. And that's exactly what happens in the estuaries, especially along the Eastern shore of US where the ocean is mixed with this brownish water coming from the river and takes this color completely. And this color could be actually attributed to some kind of mixture of sand, those, those dead leaves oozing organic and something that we call phytoplankton. And that's what I study. Phytoplankton are the teeny tiny creatures that live in the ocean. They're teeny tiny plants of the ocean. And they're so teeny tiny that if I would put 60 of them next to each other and, and compare it to the, the strand of my hair, they, they'll be thinner, that 60 of them would be thinner than the strand of my hair. So they're so teeny tiny that we usually use microscopic tools, so microscopy or genetic tools to actually study them. But they're everywhere, everywhere in the surface of any water. And they're extremely important because they're similar to the plants of land, they can do photosynthesis, which is a process through which they take carbon dioxide from surrounding waters and thanks to sunlight, they convert it into the oxygen and organic sugars. Thanks to the conversion of, of carbon to organic sugars, they, they think they capture energy from the sun and transfer it to the rest of the marine food web. So they're the base of marine food, food web. And sometimes our food web too, because like I like lobsters, I like oysters, I like cod, I like all those yummy things. From the side of the oxygen, oxygen is just a side product of something that they do that process of photosynthesis. And, and some people say every second breath you take, you should thank phytoplankton. Actually, 50% of the oxygen that was made on Earth from the history of time was thanks to phytoplankton. And the last thing, but not the least, is the fact that they take down carbon dioxide. I'm sure that the audience here is really familiar about the, with the process of the climate change. So by taking the carbon dioxide from the surface of the ocean, what they allow is more carbon dioxide from the atmosphere to actually enter that surface of the ocean. And in that way, they control the climate. So they're extremely important. They come in many shapes, colors, and sizes. Um, they're just like similar to the plants and land. You know, you have meadows, you have garden roses, you have trees, you have everything. The similar diversity, even more so, is can be found in phytoplankton. Um, 
Their shape and size and color very often define the role that they play in oceanic food web and oceanic carbon cycle. They can be mean. They can be harmful algal blooms. And you probably have heard about red tides and, and different like green, green cyanobacteria blooms that happen in some drinking water basin. But they can also be very good for the environment most of the time because they once again successfully feed the rest of the marine food web and, for example, fisheries and aquaculture that we, we rely on heavily. So if I would take them and grow them in a lab, and I can because they're, again, once again, just plants, I just give them some nutrients of fertilizer, sunshine, and water, and they grow. You can grow them like this, and they come in many, many different colors. Um, so similar to the plants on land, you know, you can see rose, you can see this, this brown, you can see yellow, you can see green, you can see light green. They have so many different pigments, and it's beautiful. So how do we usually study them? Um, Oceanographers like me usually go and research uh, projects where we go on these ships, such as this one. Uh, we have three ships in North Atlantic during that exports experiment, and we take samples of water and we we analyze the samples of water. We usually look at them under the microscope, or we have robotic microscopes these days to take these beautiful, intricate pictures that you can see on the right hand side, and then we just taxonomically assign them name and last name, the same as plants on land. We can also use um, DNA analysis, which is used more and more so now, to actually understand the diversity, the different different little plants that are present there, so we can know how will their presence impact the, the the marine food web around them and also the carbon cycle. But ocean is gigantic. As I said, ocean is 71% of the surface of the of the earth. And we have only so many research ships. We can't be everywhere and all the time. And ocean is very diverse and ocean is very changing, fast changing. So going with the ships cannot give us the synoptic view of the ocean, which we want. And this is where we rely on ocean color. So satellite ocean color is something that was um, that started 25 years ago. And it's just based, or more so, it's based on the fact that if you look at the ocean and things, as I said, to the different things there in the ocean, we're going to see different colors. Well, in the same way, we can deploy a satellite that's going to fly high above us or some kind of some 600 kilometers, which is like I think 400, 400 something miles. And it's going to observe that, that ocean. And we can take that information and try to derive, understand what's in there. Is it phytoplankton? Is it dissolved organic matter? And so on. And over the last 25 years, oh, I have this slide too. So, so the way this works, as I said, we have this satellite at satellite the top right that is scanning ocean and going super, super, super fast and taking information about this ocean color. And what this ocean, what the satellite is actually seeing is a reflection of the sunlight coming from the ocean surface. So we have sunlight that has all the colors of the rainbow. Once they hit the surface of the ocean, these happy photons can reflect from the surface, but very often they just enter into the ocean and they start interacting with things in the ocean. Um, if you're a diver, you know that as you dive deeper, certain colors of the uh, start disappearing in the ocean. In the same way, here you can see the way that with these little arrows here, how, how deep certain colors go. Usually the blue one is gonna go the deepest and so on and so on with different colors. But as this little photon of light, this little particle of light is traveling through the sea, it can interact with many different things there. And this interaction can be scattering or it can be absorption. I know this is too much physics, but I have to talk about this stuff. And every single thing, every single property that is in the ocean will interact with light. And actually the ocean color, what we see or what satellites see is in a sense, a relationship of that scattering and absorption. It tells a lot about how this light is interacting with things in the ocean and therefore what the things, what the things in the ocean are. And thanks to that, for 25 years, we have been observing oceans from space. Here you can see um, a visualization of the uh, NASA data that has been collected over the last 25 years. And first, your eyes, of course, are going to go to the land because we're land creatures. And here you can see this greenness pulsating. So now in Asia, you can see green disappear, white showing up. So you can see the transitions of the seasons. But as you follow these transitions of the season and land, start looking at the ocean. And even start seeing the same pulses because ocean has seasons too. Ocean has spring, ocean has summer, ocean has winter, and ocean has fall. In the same way, you're going to start seeing on land deserts and jungles now in Africa. 
And you're going to see similar patterns in the ocean. You're going to start seeing this like really areas where you can see this like blue transitioning to green, transitioning to yellow, indicating more and more phytoplankton, more and more plankton, more and more plants in the ocean. So we have not only seasons, we also have ecosystem. We have deserts, such as this blue one offshore, um, just above um, Amazonian plume and offshore, just center of the Atlantic Ocean. We have this jungle in North Atlantic. So this is what we were able to see with satellite. Before satellites, we have some indication, but we'll never be were able to see globally these parasites. And this is really important information because Current ocean color satellites do tell us how much phytoplankton there is. It does not tell us who is there, but tell us how much phytoplankton there is. And by observing it over the last 25 years, we can see the response of this phytoplankton to natural climate variability, such as El Nino and La Nina. But also we can see, we can use this information to predict how the ocean and plankton life, phytoplankton life in it, these little plants will respond as the climate, as the, our climate is changing. So as I said, current ocean color satellite tell us how much phytoplankton there is, but they don't give us the beautiful diversity that I was talking about. And this is what PACE steps in. PACE stands for Plankton Aerosol Cloud in the Ocean Ecosystem Mission. And this is NASA's upcoming mission. And it's gonna be carrying, and I'm gonna tell you slowly about it, three instruments, but one most importantly so is gonna be a radiometer. It's imagine it, a fancy camera that's going to be looking at the ocean. And for difference that the satellites that we currently have, they can see maybe five or six colors, is going to be able to see 50 shades of green, 50 shades of, of, of orange, 50 shades of yellow, 50 shades of, of, of red, and all these different colors, which is going to allow us to actually see that diversity in the ocean that is really, really highly important um, if we want to be able to predict harmful bloom events, um, um, how the fishery is going to behave, and ultimately, how is the ocean going to be responding to our climate? So some fancy videos, because we're at NASA, we have fancy videos. This is going to show you a little overpass and explain you how different instruments that are going to be deployed aboard PACE are going to function. So um, PACE is going to be, has this ascending polar orbit, which means it's just going to be going around the Earth super, super fast, and every period of two days is going to cover the whole Earth. It's just going to spinning like crazy, and it's going to overpass us every place on Earth at exactly at 1 p.m. And PACE is going to be carrying this ocean color instrument. As I said, from my perspective, that's really the most important instrument because that's the instrument that's going to be able to scan and take photos, in a sense, of, of ocean color all different color. It's like switching from Nokia Pixel, the old school cell phone to something that you probably have in your hands right now. Um, additionally, it's gonna have two more polarimeters. And polarimeters are also cameras, but they, on top of the fact that they take image of the ocean, they can also see under which angle is light coming towards that instrument. And while that's not really super important for the ocean, actually it is, but we don't know how much, it's superbly important uh, for under understanding of clouds and aerosols. And aerosols are one of the biggest unknowns in our capabilities of predicting future. So PACE will bring this atmospheric knowledge to us. And we know really well that ocean and atmosphere are very interlinked. So having this capability of actually observing um, these two, two systems of the Earth peril is going to be spectacular. So here now what you're seeing is the footprint of, of uh, SPECS-1, one of our polarimeters. So you can see it's really narrow swath, that narrow line. It's not going to be able to see really wide, but it's going to give us high-end information. And what is really important, on top of that information, we're going to be also collecting information coming from HARP-2. So this is the information that is be, going to give us um, lots of lots of quality data about different aerosol, fire aerosol, different things. And in the bottom, that one, we're going to get this ocean color, this hyperspectral ocean color. And this is this is going to be allowing us to see the Earth in a way we have never seen before. And not only better to better understand ocean, but also better understand this interaction between the ocean and the atmosphere. Okay, so why am I all the time talking about this, all these different shapes, sh shades of, of colors that we can see? Well, once again, I told you earlier, some of the phytoplankton is awesome, but some of it is really bad. 
So I'll take you to Arabia and see and give an example from here. You can see here the Gulf of Oman and the left hand side is Oman and the right hand side is India. And you can see these beautiful swirls and twirls in here. And these swirls and twirls are just that phytoplankton. This is what the current ocean color is seeing, is ocean color satellites are seeing. They're just seeing these swirls of green. And, and that's great. We know that there's some yum yum food there, but is it really food or something bad? It can be diatoms, which is a type of phytoplankton that's really good fish food. But it can also be something that is called uh, noctiluca, which is turtle food. And additionally, on top of it, it makes this ooze that when the local fishermen from Oman throw their nets, it makes their um, nets really, really dirty. So the fish can really avoid those nets. So it would be really great for us to be able to tell the local communities in that area, look, there's lots of diatoms. It's going to be supporting fisheries for years to come. Or, oh, look, it's a noctiluca bloom. Therefore, you should tell the local fishermen not to go fish until this passes because it's going to mess up their nets and they're going to have to clean it and they're not going to be able to fish anything. This is back again to physics, I know, but the red dots are showing you the color of the turtle food. The black dots, they're hidden on the red, are showing you the color of the fish food. And without going into further details, you can see that there's really no difference between these dots, minimal difference, not enough difference to make a really good distinction. And this is how we're seeing these, these five dots is how we currently see in the ocean. On, the, on this y-axis, actually the color is going from purple all the way to red. And this is information the pace is gonna give us. Even if you don't know the physics or biology or anything, you see that there's so many more dots here. And you can see really good distinction between black dots and red dots. So what this is saying, the PACE will be able to show us the difference between good food, fish food, or turtle food. And then this information is going to be helpful, not just to us in the U.S., but to the people around the world, as this example is showing, to people in Oman. This stuff about PACE that we already have a bunch of people around the world that are working with us prior for us launching the satellite. So they can start taking this information and, and share it with the local communities, such as fishermen or uh, decision makers. Where's space now? Well, space is still being built. Um, we're gonna be launching in early 2024, in January, 2024. I'm gonna show you a little video, how does it look uh, of satellite being built? So this is like a bunch of little people dressed up in, in white suits. And what they're doing now is actually assembling different parts of our platform, our PACE platform together. And this happened over the period of nine days after like years and years of setting all the, the, the little wires and everything together, you know? So you can see them like working really, really hard because everything is sped up, but this is how it looks when they're actually assembling this platform. But this is just the platform, no? And now we need to put some instruments on top of it. Um, so the first instrument that got put on the platform is Spex-1. And this is one of those polarimeters there. It was telling you it is really important for clouds and aerosols. And this is the instrument that came to us from our collaborators in, um, in Netherlands. Um, this instrument is ready to go the same way as, as space is ready, to, the platform is ready to go. And now currently uh, we're waiting for our prime time instrument, our OCI, our radiometer, the one that's going to be seeing this phytoplankton in so many different color to pass through some thermal tests. And, you know, like before we do lots of science, we do lots of engineering, but we also do lots and lots of testing in order to make sure that this satellite can not only survive in the space, but also survive the launch that can be very stressful in our instruments. So this is one of the portion of testing that, that Ocean Color Instrument is going through. Um, pretty much end of this month, um, it's, going to be, um, it's going to be out of this thermal vacuum testing and it's going to be attached to the PACE, uh, PACE platform and they're going to be continuing doing testing. Um, and this testing is going to continue pretty much throughout the next year um, until the January uh, 9th, 2024, we're going to be launching from Kennedy Space Center. And um, I really hope that all of you are going to be joining us. I hope we're going to make lots of cool media. And it's really, really exciting to be part of this mission that is like finally coming to launch. Um, so this was my little story about base. Um, I hope that you're going to be, that you're intrigued, that you like my story. If you want to check out a little bit more, you can just Google PACE and NASA and visit our website that has lots and lots of cool information, even some games that can tell you which phytoplankton are you. Um, and you can follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram. I don't know what's the what's your favorite social media, but we, we have really, really cool stories on our website. So I hope that you're gonna stop by and check it out.